what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here so this will be my ending explain for halloween kills so obviously of course spoilers will be involved no need to be watching this if you haven't seen the movie but at this point in time after it almost being like a week before, since the movie came out i think a lot of us who if you watch me i feel like you've already seen the movie at this point those of you who primarily watch me and interact with me on social media i feel like a lot of you have already seen it and you're watching this video because you've already seen the movie so this video is mainly for you guys so i'll just be jumping right on into where the movie was kind of already ending after tommy doyle who was played by anthony michael hall this time around tommy doyle spent the movie leading this brainless mob <laughs> all throughout haddonfield hunting michael myers down after they have irrationally take made a innocent man who escaped with michael myers another escaped mental patient from that bus after they forced him into taking his own life from ch terrorizing him all around haddonfield memorial because they were under the impression that was michael myers after he kills himself we jump to cameron his father lonnie elam and allison in a car in the back seat discussing the pattern of how michael myers his kills seem to be leading right to his childhood home which we know is now being inhabited by the characters of big john and little john who at this point have already been killed by the shape so they make their way to the myers home lonnie goes in after telling allison and cameron you know basically stay here he goes inside they don't hear back from him for a while cameron decides to go inside at that point in time after he doesn't come out quick enough for allison she goes inside while cameron's inside he goes upstairs he's stumbling around the house with a gun pointed excellent blue tints here i would say also this that whole sequence i thought was be a beautiful visual to look at you have him camera just wandering around the house upstairs he's hearing noises something he hears from above him he looks up and there's his father of course stashed there's the dead lonnie stashed in like the attic while he's looking up in horror and of course i would assume heartbreak michael myers is on his way in front of him he lunges at cameron pushes him against the wall starts stabbing him and then after he has presumably killed him down at the bottom of the flight of stairs allison is demanding that michael put him down let him go of course etc etc <laughs> he makes his way down to allison who's challenging michael cameron who for whatever reason decided to keep on showing signs of being alive got a final blow <laughs> when michael snaps his neck michael makes his way down to allison the two have a confrontation she clearly is about to lose until when he's about to stab her allison is on her knees saying do it do it do it and then we actually see that she apparently has noticed that her mother karen has stumbled onto the scene and she's yelling at karen to do it karen stabs michael in the back with like a pitchfork it looks like michael of course does not die from this after being stabbed in the back michael falls cameron stomp or not cameron but karen stomps on him stomps on his neck i believe it was now why she only did this one time first mistake don't know why she did that but after doing that instead of doing it again she decides to take his mask he ends up getting up allison is left there with an injured leg also because she stumbled down the stairs from her encounter with michael myers she takes his mask goes outside michael gets up sees karen holding his mask and she makes the statement you want your mask come and get it she's basically leading michael throughout the town all the way through until it seems like he is alone with karen he finds his mask in the middle of the road i don't know how he didn't really see this he's he's so ignorant of his surroundings honestly but the, i will say that the way that when he was unmasked how they kept him the use of lighting to keep his face hidden and not show us show us that trying to honor everything that the shape embodies even while he's unmasked i appreciated that there was no tears like halloween 5 <laughs> he ends up finding his mask in the middle of the road he's actually at this point been surrounded by the mob who were just lying away it was a trap karen has led him to another trap i mean at this point she did it she did it before i don't know why michael honestly followed her he sh should not have followed her <laughs> um underestimating karen at this point karen led him right to the mob after he finds his mask and notices they that they have him surrounded sheriff bracket is not sheriff bracket but you know bracket is seen holding a gun saying it's halloween michael everyone's entitled to one's good one good scare tommy is present other members of the mob are present michael being defiant doesn't care 
he he does he won't care one way or another who's there he wants his mask he goes to put his mask on when his mask comes on they start going to town on him beating him with whatever they have in their hand bats pitchforks there's even some gunshots fired into him they're beating him down pretty good very reminiscent and resembling anyone who played friday the 13th the game i'd say <laughs> and for some reason again these people they don't decide to finish the job they don't decide to finish the job they just leave him there as if that's enough to kill him but in meanwhile while all this is going on Laurie strode is in the hospital going over how the more he kills the more he transcends you know trying to give us this mega hyperbole i would say for everything michael myers embodies even though david gordon green is being adamant that he is very much human flesh and blood he's not supernatural and i would say that yes while nothing on screen that we saw him survive is nothing that a, a human can't survive it's the i will i believe where you're losing some audience members is how these things that people we know can survive they're all happening to michael all at once and he's somehow just still alive but you know anything's possible he could very much survive all of that it's not it's not impossible it's just the way you're framing it might not might be believable to some people so after that karen stumbles onto the stumbles back to the myers house she imagines the little michael myers up in the window of judas room being naive again she goes into the house stares out the window and michael myers somehow got up after killing the rest of the members of the mob including tommy doyle after they again left him there like fools he got up somehow after killing the mob he went back to his home no one saw him i guess <laughs> and he made his way upstairs and karen while looking out the window realizes the shape is behind her she is stabbed to death and then the movie ends with Lori strode and michael myers looking off into their different perspectives and we're having quick shots of their faces back and forth to kind of set us up for okay it's game on at this point and we know Lori strode will of course find out about this and she will be after this man 100 percent in halloween ends now there's going to be a four-year time jump after this i don't know how this will make sense a four-year time jump i don't know but we'll see what they have in store for us. But that is my ending explains for Halloween Kills. If you like this, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you have a request, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications and miss a video. In the description, I have links to my social media accounts, my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.